Biscuits. Welcome to Ear Biscuits. It's got a little leak. You didn't like that. No, okay. you usually say, I'm Link. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, funny how- I'm not a creature of habit. It's funny how many times. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty simple thing. Just go with it. The guy who starts just says, Welcome to Ear Biscuits. I'm whatever my name is. I'm not a creature of habit. I don't like to do. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's really unusual yeah. that you're the one that this is happening to. <laughs> yeah. You're Link. You, what you ended up saying, Leek, which a lot of people think your name is Leek. You said, I, sprung a little leak, or whatever you oh. said. A lot of people think your name is Leek. No, like, I said, I said, sprung a little link. Oh, you did? No. Because when you go to Starbucks, don't a lot of times they think it's Leek? Yes, Rhett, this is a sore subject. No. Well, I, just I, the other, I guess so, yeah. Just the other day. Leek. Uh, when we, we went to Star, Starbucks with our wives, remember this? Oh and, yeah, <laughs> and my wife, whose name is Jessie, said, uh, "She's like, what's your name?" And she said, "Jessie," and she was like, "That's a cute name." And I was like, "Hold on, what? This, hold on, that's." She said, "Jessie." No, you didn't say it to the barista. No, you no. turned around and you said it to me and Christy. You uh, were like, "I was like, this girl thinks Jessie's a cute name. She must not be from America." <laughs> <laughs> and then we got the we got the cup, and it was what did you, what did she written? She had written like I wasn't I was in the um, trying to go in the bathroom. It was like which doesn't happen on. Hollywood Boulevard, so I just uh, waited outside of the bathroom for a like, long time and then yet, came back. Yesy or Jaxy or something like that. It was she, she was Jaxy. Jaxy? Jaxy. She thought she said Jaxy, which would be a cute name. Anyway, my name is Rhett. But this week but at Jesse the round table of down <laughs> down <laughs> Down Pillows. Man, we are really <laughs> we have replaced the We're really hurting tonight, y'all. This week at the round table of dim lighting is your boys. <laughs> <laughs> Your boys are gonna talk to each other about horror movies. <laughs> uh, we feel a little bit differently about them. Mm. Uh, we have some different experiences, and interestingly, one we of have our a lot first of ever mm. horror movie experiences was together. It's actually not very interesting. I think they would expect that. Um, but oh, okay. I think our perspective on I don't I I'm I don't know your perspective, so I'm interested to hear that. I, you don't I, know my perspective. On that specifically. Oh, on the past? Yeah, on many other things, you've regaled me with your perspective to no end. Okay, but on, yeah. on that first night of horrorness, I've avoided ever talking about it. Well, we're going to talk about it tonight. I'm going to open up some wounds. Oh, yeah. And um, some yeah, chainsaw so, wounds. <laughs> yeah, so we, we go deep. This is going to become a psychological thriller podcast. Mm. Mm, we're going to talk about that. We're going to bear. We're gonna bare our souls. I had a bad dream last night. Uh oh. I don't I never have these type of dream dreams. Snake You never have bad dreams? Snake dreams. Oh, I have a recurring snake dream. I and I don't have one. And your wife does as well. She does, yeah. And you got it. You caught it. It is like a virus. I'm so afraid of snakes in real life that they need not make their way into my dreams. Right. And I and you know, on GMM I, I conquered my fear by self-talking, which I did not access that ability in the dream. When I was swimming in a tributary to like the Amazon River mm. in nothing but like trunks. Yeah, swimming in tributaries is a thing that happens in dreams. And I was swimming in it and there was like a jungle around me and then I saw this snake swimming right towards me. It was a I sea mean, snake. When it was like an anaconda, dude. It okay. was huge. It was like a 20 foot snake with the head the size of a basketball, mm. and it swam up to me, swam kind of around me, and I didn't panic, and I kept swimming, and it was swimming around me, and then I finally got to like this overlook, even though I was still swimming, but I wasn't about to go off a waterfall, and I saw you down there getting in yeah. a little kitty boat. Yeah, I was in the Sea Canyon. It was like a kitty, kitty ride with Locke and Lincoln, you were like get, ushering them onto a kiddie boat ride, and the three of you an were getting an undersea kiddie boat ride. No, it was just down over and over a cliff, and you were down there. And the I laws a, of physics have been suspended in your dream. They were never there. Okay, to be suspended. Right. Um. So I'm already tapping into a few fears. I might as well go all the way. What are you about to talk about? Just lay, just lay bare my soul. Or at least my, you know, talk about the big decision I've made. I'm second guessing it. Second I, don't, I don't know if I want to. Or second guessing talking about talking it. Talking about it. Well, you have to talk about it. I know now that I've said I'm gonna talk about it because I know we no, we every, talked about me talking about it. 
But everyone's going to talk about it. You don't have right. a choice. And because everybody, you know, whenever you change something about your appearance and you're me or you, you know everybody's gonna talk about it so you're gonna, you just need to go ahead and get ahead of it. Get ahead and of it. And it may be too late. It's a little too late to be ahead of it but it, you're kinda just getting in sync with it. Um, I've got a few gray hairs. Mm -hmm. And by a few I mean a, a, a lot. I, I feel like I need to confess that I've been hiding my gray hairs. How you been hiding them? I've been coloring the gray hairs. Um, what color? They were gray. What color you been coloring? <laughs> Purple. <laughs> you haven't noticed the color of the rest of my hair. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Or at, at least trying to approximate it. Um, I didn't notice, so I think you did a great job. I I don't know what when I made the decision. I think it was um, when we were wrapping Buddy System. I think I've. I've mentioned on a podcast that the um, the people that you get closest to uh, are the the makeup people and the hair people because you see them at the beginning of every day and the end of every day and you right. have conversations with them and they know they know your deepest fears of forgetting lines because you're cramming to study those right and you're in a vulnerable position but you know so they're like you know you got you get you got to do a better job coloring your hair like they you know you just have conversations about this i'm like yeah because you've been doing it personally i do it like personally. you take out like a brush what is it shoe polish well, how how does it work um i've been using just for men oh well that's because you are a man as you know i am just <laughs> a man <laughs> nothing more and um wait you know because you don't want to go down the aisle with all the women hair dye you want to go on the man aisle with the razors hold on is this just for men i want to make sure this is just of course for men. not it's so stupid it's marketing hold on this would this would not work on a female's hair right it's just for men just making sure i guarantee you the stuff on the on the the woman hair color aisle which by the way instead of just having like a little swath of hair color has an entire aisle of the stuff is the same exact stuff and probably cheaper or and more expensive, all types. Because nobody can compete with Just For Men. When Just For Men came up with that, right. they, they got the corner on the man market. Right. Because you can't have like for everyone. Be, you, you, just For Men won. And so that's where I went because men aren't comfortable going down the, the women color aisle. Right. They wanna go down the razor aisle and just pick it up when nobody's looking. Yeah, that's just for me. I'll take it home. It, I mean, it's probably going back five years. I, maybe more than that. I remember, let's, I mean, it has to have been more than that. When I start, first started seeing some gray hairs. It's not because I'm old, even though I do blame it on my kids all the time whenever they're like, Dad, you can't, I see your gray hair. And they're like, well, it's your fault. It's, it's hereditary, man. It's not because I'm getting old. It's because genes. My mom went gray. Early, but, I, look, but I'm hedging. But let me just say though, so that you're not. T I mean, you're not really going great. I just early. I, I I mean, you're 39 years old. I mean, I'm a young guy. Yeah, I know. But lots of people are in their in their late 30s. Have and go hair. if you're gonna go gray, this is when it happens. Yeah, but I mean, I, I've got some springs starting too. It just doesn't show up as much because my hair is not as dark. Um. So what I would do was at first I would just I had some like in my park and I would just pluck them out Ooh. because they would be wiry. Yep, they come back, they come in a different consistency. And then at a certain because like right where your hair would part, like all the way back here, I would notice they're, some some sprigs would be coming up. They're a little pubish, pubish, but totally white. Yeah, like if your pubic region got struck by lightning, that's what it looked like on top of my head. In but certain there places. are benefits to when that happens. My uncle Roy. Oh yeah, got struck for lightning on his <laughs> lightning rod. Got struck for lightning <laughs> <laughs> on his lightning rod. Um, and then at a certain point, I'm like, whoa, we're right here where you would like head a soccer ball, not the total front, but just behind that, I saw a patch like over, over like my right frontal lobe, like a little white patch. And I was like, you know what? I'll just get a little bit of that beard and mustache color because you, you just brush that on. Yeah. So, and then I would like brush a little bit up there and a little bit back here so I don't have to pluck that on the crown of my head. And then of course, that patch gets bigger. Mm -hmm. And grows, it spreads yeah. like a virus. I remember one time I tried, I was like, screw this. I'm just gonna shampoo my whole head with the hair dye. And it was when I went home for Christmas one time. Oh, I remember that. And I was, I was out grilling 
And I, because and it says it only sticks to the white hairs. Mm -hmm. and that's a, you, a look, lie. you look like the, the dad from Adam's family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that, that yeah. Christmas. <laughs> and I remember I was, I was grilling, I was grilling with my dad who, I was living out here so I don't see him as often. And I remember when I was grilling, all of a sudden I noticed he was looking at me instead of the grill. And he was like, hmm. you dye your hair? <laughs> he said that to me. And I was like, yeah, I tried. Well, it's just a spot here and there, but I tried the, the whole thing and it didn't. It went black. Basically. I was like, I am not gonna do that again. So then over time, over years, I would just, you know, like just, I, I noticed I was using more and more of the just for men. But can, let, can I? Out of the let tube. Me, let me interject because I- And you start to, f go ahead. I think that, not to speak for you, but to speak for you, because um, I'm also speaking for myself. Yeah. I think that uh, the tendency to, to, to dye the hair, I think was rooted in, we've always had this feeling mm -hmm. that people perceived us to be younger than we actually are. Yes. Because most people do, if you just stumble on one of our videos, you don't think, well, I don't know. I'm starting to I'm starting to look older faster. I think we're working too hard. But rewind just a couple of years. You wouldn't think that guy's about to turn 40. I don't think. Right. And so And we felt like in order to succeed on YouTube, we couldn't be seen as like old guys. old guys. And so it was just like, ah, everybody does it. People dye their hair. Sure. So it's like, yeah, I don't want to I don't want them to think I'm old. I don't want to become irrelevant. I literally thought out loud you to thought myself out loud? to myself. George Clooney did it. George Clooney did what? Dyed his hair. Like that was a rationale for me to feel more comfortable. How long about doing did it. he do it? I, he do, does it on and off, you know. He he. I mean, for years before that movie in Hawaii, he would do it all the time. He would, he he would he was gray on ER, dude. He was salt and pepper on ER. Right, but he wasn't doing it to hide it. He was doing no. it for parts. He was he was doing it. Well, no, he would do it in real life as like this is who, this is my no, my normal look. But he wasn't trying to not let anyone know that he would. No, because he was on ER as a. Right. I don't even know if I'm right, but I use it as a rationalization. I don't think it's true, but I don't think he ever died. His because hair. the flip side of being on YouTube is that there's a level of auth expected authenticity that you don't. That's not required of just an actor. Mm -hmm. So I always felt a little bad about it, or. I mean, self-conscious about it at least. And I think you also look talk forward to the day when. It's not like we didn't talk about it, you by didn't the way. Think you it's not like I was keeping it from you no, or no, anything. No. It w you didn't think, you, you dreaded the day that you'd have to let it go and make the switch, right? And if you're I like, knew if that, I'm still in the public eye and yeah. all of a sudden I become Anderson Cooper, I got some susplaining to do, right? right. My, my Uncle Dan um, had, a, had a big red beard and reddish hair and he was a, a school principal for years and um, then one day he comes over to Nana and Papa's house, his in-laws to eat dinner like we did every month and he had gotten a promotion to be like the su superintendent of the public schools in the county. Of Harnett. And, and all of a sudden he was full gray. It was like a different man was eating dinner with us. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's shocking. I wouldn't wanna do that to anybody. Yeah, well, you've, Much less you've the avoided mythical that. Beast. You've avoided that. Right, but yeah, by me, so I think that's what went into making the decision now was, you know what, I think I just gotta, I don't, I feel like I'm covering something up emotionally or in some way, besides obviously physically, and I, it didn't make me feel comfortable. But and I was you like, also feel it's free ridiculous. To just, to just. I felt safe enough with like, the mythical beast to be to be gray if I have gray hairs. Yes, but in my own brain, I had to let my I had to let I had to give gave, give myself permission because we were also sensitive about we would also avoid talking about how old we were. Right, you know, up to probably like five years ago. Right and now, it's just you know, by the, when this podcast comes out, I will be forty years old. That's right, and we I, everyone knows that now. I don't, and, and I'm not worried about it. And there is something freeing about that and I decided when the makeup people with Buddy System would like brush the white hairs that I didn't dye with like something in between takes to like cover it up, I was like enough of this, this is for the birds. And like trying to color my own hair over the weekend or you don't know how many fights me and Christy got in 
with her trying to like color this part in the back. She wouldn't do it right? Uh, yeah, in my opinion, she wasn't doing it right. <laughs> but in her opinion, she didn't have to do it at all, poor, so. Poor woman. So <laughs> I do not envy that position, <laughs> coloring Link's hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Um, so there were so many factors that just pushed me over the edge, but the main one is just to be me. You know, if I wanna tell people to be themselves and to be confident in who they are, why well, I need to do that? You know? Yeah, but I actually think there's, that there's, I think that ultimately you will only experience a positive benefit that's redundant. You will only experience benefit from this. I don't. Th I honestly don't think right. there's any negative that can come from this. I think if anything, there'll be some parent who's watching Good Mythical Morning over their child's head, shoulder, <laughs> and they'll see you and be like, hmm, "Great, he's got gray hair. He's old. He's he must be about my age. Maybe maybe this, I'll start watching. Maybe this is for me. Or they'll look over their kid's shoulder and be like, "Why are you watching that old man? <laughs> this is creepy. Uh, this is creepy for everybody." I think that I might I might lose some some fans who psychologically think it's creepy to watch a uh, an old guy. But you'll gain some. But for every, every one you but lose, I, you'll gain two. I hope to gain so many more who are fan of salt and pepper hair and. I don't know. It's just in here. It's not everywhere. Well, it, it's kind of it all be, on though. the sides. I mean, it will and be. And it eventually will be yeah. everywhere. Yeah. I guess I feel better. Yeah, you should. No, I feel, I feel fine. I feel good about the um about the decision. And you know what, mythical beast, you will feel better when you cuddle up in a good mythical hoodie. Do I have one to show? I've got one. You have the boil for safety mug over there. And then cuddle up with a boil for safety mug. You know what? This is it's it's made of metal, man. You can sit there and take it on your camping trip, take your hoodie and your and your tin cup and cuddle up next to the fire. It's getting cold out there. Some places in the world, it's already well, world, yeah, definitely, but some places in the US, uh, it's already cold. I feel sorry for you guys. In California, we we wear hoodies just as a fashion statement. We never ever actually need them. It's just, I mean, maybe there's like three days a year where you actually don't, need a hood. I mean, don't I'm just, don't anti sell it. I'm just saying, but, you want a hoodie, but you want this a is the best hoodie. Look, look good and feel good. The back's got a daggone logo on it too, man. It's a daggone logo. It's a right dead there. limb logo on the back. It's the same logo as the front, but it's bigger. Should be backwards on the back. Like you're seeing the reverse image. Support entertainment and show your mythical beastliness. Go to mythical.store. Okay, um, so we're gonna talk about our experience with horror movies and uh, I do believe that, I mean, I think I saw horror movies before the one that we're gonna talk about first, mm -hmm. but we, we can just start with our common experience uh, because I believe that was definitely your first horror movie, and it was a, it was a big one to start with. Oh my goodness! Well, this is what I remember. Do you know what grade it was? Fourth grade? Uh, third grade. It was sixth grade. Sixth grade? Because I remember yeah. another monumental event that happened that night that I will talk about in another podcast. So sixth grade, and then that's how I mark that year. Uh, Sixth grade. We had a group sleepover at Adam Nicholson's house. Yep. I never had a sleepover at Adam Nicholson's house. And um, so it was, I guess it was his birthday. It was like, this, is, like going, this is going all night, man. <clears throat> I don't know whose idea it was to put on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. All I remember is. But I was he scared. Was, he was talking about it and I was just so excited to watch it. Because on like I, a, did he go to like Coates Party Beverage and like tanning salon and, and rent the VHS? He must have. I mean. His older also, brother who worked at Hooters probably did. Larry. Larry, you that, could, he, that he, Hooter frying. He probably also. Uh, well you didn't fry the Hooters, you fried the wings. The wings. 
Um, he also probably owned it. I, Larry's the kind of guy that would have owned Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Larry was cool, but the the, the parents knew that we it was not it was not a uh, we weren't sneaking around. The parents knew that we were watching it, and I was super excited because I'd already kind of been enjoying horror movies, and the idea of enjoying a horror movie in a group of my friends um, was espe especially exciting to me. I think that horror movies, even though they're like rated R, are designed for sixth graders to watch because it can just scare the living crap out of you and change your entire life. Like I said, I was just, I didn't, I had never heard of it before. I never watched a horror movie before. And the moment he said we were gonna watch it, I was like freaking out in my brain, but I wasn't gonna tell anybody because that wasn't cool. I mean, I definitely thought about bailing on the whole sleepover entirely. I'm sure of it. Well, but I didn't I know do you, it. You were already anxious just about being at a sleepover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For reasons I, I didn't know at the time. I did not know that you were so anxious about it. I was like, surely Link is having just as good of a time as I am at this stranger's house. Not this stranger's house, but at this friend that we don't know that well's house. I never spent the night over there, but I felt comfortable doing it in a group. So he brought out Chainsaw Massacre. Also that night, we stuck uh, somebody's hand in warm water and tried to get them to pee themselves. Yeah, after we went to sleep. Who was that? Who would that have been? I don't know. I it do. Didn't I, work. I, I do remember it, he trying it, but since it didn't up. work, I don't remember it. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm gonna read the synopsis of oh. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Made in 1974, released in 1974, actually. Shot in 73, outside of Austin, Texas. When Sally hears that her grandfather's grave may have been vandalized, she and her paraplegic brother, Franklin, set out with their friends to investigate. After a detour to their family's old farmhouse, uh-oh, they discover a group of crazed, murderous outcasts living next door. I believe it was an incestuous family of freaks, mm. the way I would put it. As the group is attacked one by one by the chainsaw-wielding Leatherface, who wears a mask of human skin, the survivors must do everything they can to escape. Now this thing was made for $140,000. I, I mean, you can kinda tell when you watch it, Pretty clear that it was a low budget film. Uh, yeah, made over thirty million in the box office. Good um, gracious, that's a great return on your investment. But I just remember watching it that night, and then. Uh, well, do you remember? What do you remember about the movie? Like, does anything specifically stand out? Because there's one scene that really stands out for me. Um, with the meat hook. No, I just kind of have a vague memory of a of, oh, of, of Leatherface and, and, and the chainsaw. I, I distinctly remember, I mean, to me it was like, yeah, it was like a like a refrigerated butcher room, but he like takes this girl and then he there's like a meat hook and he hangs her on the meat hook, like <coughs> through her back. Mm. She's hanging there, man. It was so grotesque and that family acted so weird. And the fact that it was shot in 1974, it just looked so disturbing and it was so, hackishly done, like it all played into like being horrifying. I mean, there was a there was a guy who played the granddad and he had like this, I, I watched this clip, so I, I only remember this part from rewatching it a, a second ago um, because I was I wanted to verify the meat hook, which I did and I shouldn't have. Verify the meat hook. But do you remember there was like, there was like a, a granddad at a Remember dinner table, an, an old, and he old had like man. really old man makeup and like a like a latex skin on. And then they took the the girl, and they cut her finger, and then they made and then the granddad was sucking on the on her finger. <laughs> it's just demented That's stuff, great man. Cinema. Now, see, you're saying this demented and horrifying. As if this is I didn't even mention the guy with the human skin mask well, you on did the chainsaw in the synopsis. You're saying all this as this is a, as it's I cannot speak to yeah. I've been talking too much. It, today. Does, it doesn't matter. This as does. if it's a bad thing. You say, oh, it's so horrifying. That's what makes it such a great thing. Is there really nothing at all about the experience of just f being just 
totally scared to the, your core, but knowing that you're not really in any danger, there's, is there not anything exhilarating about that? I didn't know that I wasn't in danger. It's like something, there was no logic component to this. I mean, it was like in the dream when the snake swam up to me in the tributary, that was a snake and I was swimming. I mean, I experienced that as a sixth grader in, in, in the similar way, because you remember what happened afterward? We went outside. Yeah, when the movie's over, then someone had the bright idea to be like, let's go outside, and his backyard backed up to a huge field, mm -hmm. I remember and this. then we, everyone just started walking into the field in the pitch black at night, and it was like a cornfield, or like, mm -hmm. and we're walking into it, and then all of a sudden, once you walk into the field, you can't see your friends anymore. Yeah. So, I'm alone in a field in a place I've never been, and I can hear rustling, presumably of you people, <laughs> former friends of mine walking in the, and it was the most terrifying thing. I mean, I was waiting for Leatherface to jump out at any moment, dude. See, this is, you know. It was <laughs> torture. This, this is interesting, because sometimes there are these uh, life events that really highlight very stark differences. We're very similar in a lot of ways, very different <laughs> yeah. in a lot of ways. So when a group of kids. It was probably your idea. When a group of kids goes into a dark cornfield, the only thing I'm thinking is, how do I scare someone? And you're, th and you're, you're thinking. I'm thinking, am I'm I so gonna scared. die? Right, and I'm like, you become the victim and I become Leatherface. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, you become the girl on the meat hook and I become Leatherface. Six, you're sixth grade Leatherface. I mean, there's. I love scaring people. You're like, dang it! I should have brought my chainsaw. Uh, you, you remember, like, we would go, we would go uh, camping. Yes. Across the across the uh, river. Cape Fear River, yeah. And we would all be walking, and then sometimes I would, we would be well, walking through the woods, and all I, of a sudden I'd turn around, and I'd be gone. But where's Rhett? And I would literally devote like an hour of my time. I would let you guys get completely ahead of me, and then I would walk through the woods, and I would get like a hundred yards from the campsite. It's totally dark, and I would very, very. Slowly, and I, and I would get up next to the to the campsite, and I could hear you guys, and you would all be like, "He's gonna come scare us. He's gonna scare us at any moment." But I would wait. <laughs> You'd wait, I would wait get past really, that really moment. close, and I would wait for you to get right to that moment where you had let your guard down, and I would just come out there and scream. Well, the camp. I, I love doing. I that. remember this one time because the campsite <clears throat> was on the other side of the river, and then again another tributary came off of the river and formed our campsite on an island. Yeah. And I remember we set up camp and then you went to take a leak and never came back. Didn't come back. It was pitch dark right. outside of the campfire zone. And then after a while, I go to take a leak and I go next to the tributary and I swear for the past 30 minutes, you had been submerged in the water. I was in the river. You were in the river. I got the in river. the river and just kept my eyes like, above the water and waited for somebody to come take a leak. Like, like Predator, right? Like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I and live Predator. for that kind of thing. I do it to my kids too. But my, you my know dad what? I did. did I did pee on you. So. <laughs> <laughs> my dad did it to me. I remember really vividly coming back over, uh, walking back home from Ben Greenwood's house, and my mom had called me and said, "You need to come home." Uh -huh. It was like it was late or whatever, and so my dad knew that I was walking from Keith Hills back to our house. It's like a mile walk, like across a couple of cornfields. And the, the same cornfield. Yeah, same cornfields. That, but yeah, Adam's Adam's and house back there. I'm like walking, and I come out of the cornfield, and then I'm walking pat, like on the grass field in front of my house, and I get right up to the road, and all of a sudden the bush starts shaking, and then all of a sudden there's a dog going, <laughs> and then I realize it's my dad, and I'm like, I'm on the ground. You laid on I, the ground. I was so scared. <laughs> And then he just laughed at me. And you got a thrill out of that? Uh, or or you wanted to be your dad, you're like one day, I'm gonna be the scarer, I just and this, I'm gonna have the power. I have a very similar personality makeup. It's like, I, did, I wasn't scarred by it, it was just like, when we went inside, I was like, man, you got me, you know? And then, then I just, you know, I just, I carried on the cycle. But it's not that you experience joy in being scared, it's that you. No, I, but I do, you, I do, I do. That's what, so that's where I wanna go with this, because you like riding a roller coaster, right? Yeah. And to me, the, the joy of riding a roller coaster, as long as I'm not getting sick, is 
the feeling of being in danger with not really being in danger. Now, of course, that's not the part I like about now, it. Now, of course, there there is. I like the fun part. Yeah, but what makes it fun? It's the thrill, and what makes it a thrill? The the physical sensation of. I I mean, I could just pick you up and throw you around, and that wouldn't be fun. Well, it might be. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think it would be. I don't think it would be the same thing. I, to me. So you're saying it's the, it, the adrenaline associated with a simulated near death experience on a roller coaster, wh where I can suspend my my fear of actual death, and, and the I can. scarier it is, the the more the sensation, right? So okay, so when we we went to Six Flags uh, with the team, and we got on that. What was the one where you were flying? What was that called? Where What's that thing called? The one at Six Flags that's like I couldn't say it sponsored right. by uh it by the by the chips. I don't know one. what it's called. Um but anyway, there's one where you basically are strapped in and you're flying and the whole time I was strapped in, I was thinking if this thing Yeah, we went we breaks, we, talk, we talked about this. Right. And so, but that's what made it great is that I actually thought Man, I am. I could actually be in danger, but then when you get through it and you're done, you're like, "That was the best one. That's the one I remember. That's the that was the best experience I had at Six Flags. Was the time I thought I was gonna die, and then I didn't." So, a horror movie is is your mom into the also same thing. also trained you to like that experience in the form of horror movies too, because she would she force feed you horror movies as a baby. I don't think that my mom really understood. Like my mom thought that her her presence with you made whatever you were watching okay. It was like parental guidance. As long as I guide him through this, <laughs> it'll be okay. Um, well, R stands for restrict. Now, but she has um, denied this too. Restricted without mom being because there. Because I've talked about how uh, either on the podcast or Good Mythical Morning, I don't know. Watching uh, Hellraiser. Hellraiser, how she got me to watch Hellraiser or she let me watch Hellraiser with her and when I was very young. And she's denied this and she says, I wouldn't have done that. And I was like, well, how do I remember it? And how do I remember sitting there next to you watching it? <laughs> um, so, but she loves horror movies. My mom will go see horror movies by herself. Mm -mm. Like she, she called me last year and she was like, I just went to see Insidious 4 or whatever which one it was <laughs> by myself and I was the only one in the theater. What? And she loved it. She loves every, She loves every every minute of it. So there's what? something in our blood that hmm. makes us want to experience these things. But, but, and, and I've made kind of a. Feels wrong to the me. The funny thing is, is I don't have a lot of people in my life to enjoy horror movies with. Uh, Jesse doesn't like to watch them. You don't really like to watch them. We will talk in a second about some of the ones that we have enjoyed together or we both have enjoyed recently. But one of my favorite horror movie stories is I, I learned that my father-in-law. Oh, well, you, th this movie, you made me watch it with you in the theater and then you watched it again with him. Oh, The Ring? Yes. Okay. I saw The Ring in the theater yeah. in G Greensboro. In Greensboro? Yeah. Okay. Uh, after Christmas because you were like, man, we got, we got some time, we're on the <laughs> road, let's stop at a theater and watch The Ring. And I'm like, no, we'll watch something else. And we get there and there's nothing else within a, uh, hour and a half time frame. So then you forced me to watch the ring. And how do you remember that? Don't don't pull a your mom on me. I remember it because it no. scared the daylights out of me. How do you remember that? Not how do with my you brain. remember that uh, with my brain? I don't understand. Tell me about your experience. How do you recall that? What was it like to watch the movie? That, oh. that's what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I. Uh, not how do you go about remembering <laughs> that, but like tell me about the experience. Oh. What do you mean, man? No, I was just making it. my brain. <laughs> I, it scared It scared me. It was very scary. You didn't enjoy any of it. I, it was all to, bad. You, I, I can read the synopsis and then I'll let you tell the story about it. I here. think most people know the synopsis of The Ring, but feel free to read it. It sounds like just another urban legend. A videotape filled with nightmarish images leads to a phone call for telling the viewer's death in exactly seven days. Why couldn't it be in the video? Why Why you gotta get a phone call? Anyways. Newspaper reporter Rachel Keller, played by Naomi Watts, is skeptical of the story until four teenagers all die mysteriously exactly one week after watching just such a tape. 
allowing her investigative curiosity to get the better of her. Rachel tracks down the video and watches it. Now she has just seven days to, to unravel the mystery. Even reading that scared me. So we watched it together. I really enjoyed it. I like watch, I, I do not watch horror movies by myself. I've, n I've almost done it a couple of times, but I'm not like my mom. I don't wanna do that because I, the thing I enjoy is being with someone who's also getting scared. That's why my birthday parties usually consist of watching a horror movie together with a bunch of adults. Mm -hmm. Because I like to see, especially people who don't like to watch horror movies get scared. But I found that my father-in-law also liked to watch horror movies and so I don't know, this is years ago. Uh, we I just gotten married to Jesse, so this is like. Well, it came out in 2002, so it's probably 2003. Yeah, and so it was like right when it came out on video. Mm -hmm. And um, so she's like, uh, he's like, let's watch a horror movie together. I'm gonna go get the ring. I'm gonna go, yeah, it was when you went to rent movies. And uh, he comes back with it and uh, like, okay, we're gonna watch this thing together. And we're in the living room together and then Jesse and her mom are on the other side of the house, like um, on the sun porch, they called it. So like basically outside of the house. And you should explain what happens in the movie. Yeah, so well, of course, the in the movie, right? once Something. She, well, yeah, the way that she kills you is she comes, you're watching the tape and then she comes out of the television and kills you. Um, She's very pale. Yeah, and so, and the first scene is probably the scariest one. The first murder in the mo in the movie in the original ring is incredibly scary. So, sitting there watching it, we got all the lights off, and we got the volume cranked up real high. And there's this moment when it's zooming in on the television, and I know what's about to happen because I've seen the movie. I know that she's about to come out of there, and as soon as sh her that that black hair. That greasy black hair is like right there at the the screen. At the peak of the music and the build up and everything, all of a sudden the TV, the speaker, everything, the whole entertainment center just goes and just oh, cuts off. No. And then we both. Ran. <laughs> <laughs> ran. We both. Where do you run? We ran to the sun porch. You ran to your mama. We ran, you ran to, your to mama our ladies. <laughs> we just ran in there. It was like, we, we, we had like run all the way across the house and then we ran in there and they're like, what in the world? Why With your you, father-in-law. Why are you guys now, running in here? And we're like, uh, we, um, the horror movie just did something in real life. <laughs> you know? Oh my goodness, but then you looked over and your dad was holding the plug. No, it laughing. Wasn't my father. No, barking like a we dog. Never. I think that's a, crazy. I think though. actually, what happened? The timing of it. My is crazy. scientific, ex, my completely rational explanation of this is that we had it turned up so loud, and the bass was so it was the music was peaking at that point that mm -hmm. something happened that it overpowered the system, and then it went out. Or maybe the ring is real and. If we hadn't ran out of the room to the sun porch, we would be dead. Wasn't there a viral video of um, people? Of, there was like a bunch of televisions in like a Best Buy or something, and then w w a ring girl crawls out of a television. Yeah, that was for the, like the most recent ring, you know, campaign. That's if you've got a horror movie these days, you got to have some viral campaign like that where somebody gets, you know, thrown up against the wall by some witch in a coffee shop, that kind of thing. You gotta have that if you want anybody to watch your movie. It's a remake of a Japanese horror classic. But so so what I have done for a, a number of my birthdays is I've invited, especially since we moved out here, um, I've invited a lot of people over um, to watch a horror movie with me, so. And 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 just to bring you up to speed on on my horror movie watching life, you took me to see The Ring, well, after the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I did not watch another horror movie. I didn't even watch Gremlins. <laughs> I don't believe that's technically a horror movie, but. I wouldn't watch it. <laughs> I would not watch anything that w could remotely be scary after that movie. Probably until you took me to see The Ring as a married adult man <laughs> with a few gray hairs. Just a few. <laughs> 
But then, so this is probably three years ago, maybe four years ago, because we were we were definitely in the old in the in the previous studio. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, the downstairs did not have any (laughs) windows. I'm like, I'm gonna have a birthday party. I'm gonna invite all my friends over, and we're gonna watch The Conjuring together. And it's great because your birthday is in October, so it's like everybody's in the the Halloween f- mood, festivities. Right. And uh, nobody- w- The Conjuring. Every, everybody was kind of in the same place. They were like not really fans of horror movies, um, but one person in particular hated horror movies more than you, and yeah. that was Tony. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, I don't want to be here, but I know this is your, you know, we're friends, it's your birthday. Not to name drop, but for context, we're talking about Tony Hale. Yeah, so now yeah. It, it's funnier because you can, you, 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 you can, can imagine e- what, the, what you it's know, like to watch him watching a horror movie. Buster from Arrested Development, or I mean, even more famously now, whatever he is on Veep, I can't remember his name right now. Gary. Gary, but um, yeah, just imagine him. He, I mean, he was like, I'm only here because we're friends and I wanna support you as a friend, but. And then he proceeded to put on <laughs> headphones while we watched the movie. He put in earbuds <laughs> and listened to music while we watched the movie. Like, I think the way he put it was like really nice music. Yeah. Like friendly music. And he also left a couple of times. Yeah. So he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't watch the movie, but he wanted to be supportive. So he listened to nice music and he didn't, and he looked at us. And I gotta say, that is very kind of him. Uh, I, I really appreciate the support, but I would have enjoyed it more if he had just committed fully to the experience, because that's yeah. the thing that's so exhilarating to me. For you to be entertained at his expense. Well, I like everybody to be in this. This I love to watch it in a group because everybody's grabbing onto each other, and it's just like you're you're just experiencing this as a team. It's like you're like it's as close as you can get to being like one of those pods that's gonna roam around during the apocalypse. You know what I'm saying? Like a, just yeah. a, like the- If we can get through this t- we together. Right. We can, we can, we'll be safe. Safety in numbers. We can do numbers. anything. We can do anything. If we can get through this movie. And The Conjuring was especially scary. Shall I read the <laughs> synopsis? Read the synopsis, Link. In 1970, paranormal investigators and demonologists Lorraine and Ed Warren are summoned to the home of Carolyn and Roger Perrin. The parents and their five daughters have recently moved into a secluded farmhouse. There's that farmhouse again. Where a supernatural presence has made itself known. Mm -hmm. Though the manifestations are relatively benign at first, events soon escalate in horrifying fashion, especially after the Warrens discover the house's macabre history. And now these- these Synopsis are, are not very great for horror movies because they can't give anything away. Right, yeah. But you can keep reading them. Yeah. Um, the thing ab- the thing about any any sort of um, demon related horror movie is there's this there's always been this thing in the back of my mind that I'm like it's di- it's different than just a very crazy dude with a grotesque mask. monster that feels like very removed yeah. from the human experience, but then. When all of a sudden there's like a demon in the house, you're like, um, he could be in your house right now. Uh, I don't know what I actually think about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if I believe in this or not, but it, it could be true. I don't know. And then you and then you you really start getting scared. And then and if and, it is true and you don't believe in it, you not believing in it doesn't matter. And yeah, right. So and he then can be there at any and moment. And then when you get home, he can be there too. You're, you're thinking, um, yeah. Oh man, because you know that the swamp thing, swamp thing's not gonna be in your house. Yeah, because your house is not in a swamp. But maybe your house is haunted, maybe there's a demon under the bed. Right. Or in your dog or something like that. Well, I prefer to think that he's hiding behind the trash cans, which is why I always run back in the house after throwing the trash away. And then the following year, I got everyone to watch the uh, Babadook. I'm giving up on the synopsis. Yeah, uh, that one was, no, this is the one where the kid. The basement. The kid was spooked out about this Babadook haunting him and the mom starts talking to it. Oh gosh. 
Oh my it's bad. goodness. You want me to read the synopsis? Read the synopsis, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia, who lost her husband in a car crash on the way to give birth to Samuel. Ooh, only first of all, kids. Their only child. Only you 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 like come from a horror movie situation as an only child. Yeah. Though. You know, like you could have been like the little boy in a horror movie. That's the thing. Maybe you are. Mhm. Struggles to cope with her fate as a single mom. This is like Sue. Yeah. Sam Link's constant fear of monsters and violent reaction to overcome the fear doesn't help Sue's calls either, which makes her friends become distant. When things cannot get any worse, they read a strange book in their house about the Babadook monster that hides in the dark areas of their house. Hey honey, you're troubled? I've got an idea. Let me read you a story about the Babadook. What kind of mom? Even Sue seems to feel the effect of Babadook and desperately tries in vain to destroy the book. The nightmarish experiences the two encounter from the form the rest of the story. Now, but she would talk to it in order to try to get it to go away, right? And I think at first that at first she was doing <laughs> that to calm the kid, but then it it was it was actually. But there. that's another a great device in a horror movie is a child. Children. Now, first no. of all, the scariest, I think I've said this before, but the scariest possible thing in a horror movie is um, a, like, a, like a little girl that has somehow been corrupted by evil. Because you've got the most <laughs> innocent thing you can possibly think of that in the irony of, so like Poltergeist or whatever, that those movies are, or even like The Exorcist where you've got like, a young girl getting possessed by a demon like that, the juxtaposition there is just so strong. And um, so, but the Babadook was really scary, but it didn't get me as much as The Conjuring. It wasn't as pure of an experience. Tony didn't come to that part. No, he didn't. He you know, he's, he's, he's too scared. Too scared. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, he ran out of nice music. So it's interesting because this whole. This that was at your house and there were windows too. That's true. This whole concept. And some people were in the other room, like they were talking a yeah, little bit. Yeah, it's hard to be isolated in yeah. my house, yeah, because it's oh, too open. But this concept of watching horror movies um, for for entertainment, like in a group, has passed on to our kids. Yes. Well, interestingly, so m and I, my son gets I it directly Locke, from me. I bet Locke did it but to my family. But Lincoln is now in on it and he's not like, I remember Lincoln like would watch like, to think of something that's not actually scary that, like Gremlins, <laughs> but yeah. not even Gremlins. He would like watch like. Land Before Time, Odin dinosaurs can step on you. Exactly, and then he would like have to come upstairs yeah. and, and, and sleep with you guys. Yeah. But now Locke's got him watching, they watch freaking Annabelle together. Yeah, it's like a status symbol to be able to brag to your friends that like, I watched. That's the baby doll See, one, right? See, I think you're seeing it wrong though. You you think that, I think they I think Lincoln think did it cuz he thought are, it was cool. You think kids are watching it cuz they're trying to prove something? You don't think that the idea of just this, I think Locke watches it for the same reason that I do, to get really really scared. We we went to see it I together. I think Lincoln watched it because Locke was into it. Well, before I tell the it story cuz I want to talk about the the two horror movies of of 2017 that I think are just like probably my two favorite movies of 2017 are both horror movies. But mm -hmm. um, the other night, well, this has been this has been a few weeks. We were at your house, and um, Locke was like, "Dad, Lincoln and I are going to watch Annabelle." And so they go back to Lincoln's room. They put the movie on, and then Lily, while they're watching the movie, she goes and gets a bunch of her dolls that she used to play with, and she sits them in the hallway. Yeah. So the first thing they're gonna see when they come out after the movie is a bunch of dolls staring, staring at right up at them. <laughs> <laughs> like and American Girl dolls, like those that like are the like. the big ones with the big, big ones. open eyes. Yeah. American Girl dolls, yeah. So, and she they. got them out of the garage. I'm like, why Why are we keeping these? Oh, for, for occasions like this. Occasion. So what they did, they opened the door and they both kicked the dolls. They like they, <laughs> they, they, they <laughs> Yeah, it was they, like they convulsive. They freaked out reaction. and attacked the dolls. Yeah, and and uh, which I love that. That's what I live for. Stuff like that. Yeah, Lily, it's like it's like you hiding in the in the river water, up to your eyes, like an alligator. That's what she was doing. I think part of it has to do with the fact that we just don't. I think humans are, um, you know, we're basically, it's in our DNA to 
be scared and to escape as to, a, es- to escape things. It's a safety mechanism. When in doubt, over and over be again. afraid of it. You know, instinctively. So like, we've still got this Stone Age hardware, right? And we've got the modern day uh, software, but the our hardware, our DNA, is basically designed so that we will experience this incredible stress and then we will move away from it and there'll be this like feeling of euphoria when we get away from that thing, right? It's that was reinforced over mm. millions of years. Mm. But we don't live, and this one of the reasons we have all these health problems is because we live, we have this very constant low grade stress that causes a cortisol release, which is very unhealthy to have this like constant release as opposed to like a big flush Burst. of it and then it's and then it's over. So you, so you, you think that your mom taught you from an early age to flush the system. I don't know if it's, because I'm already, I'm also living in the stressed out modern day world with this unhealthy level of like low grade stress. I'm just saying that I think one of the reasons that you feel good after you watch something that's really scary and then you're, and then and it's over is like, it's for me, it is that flush, but there is also the bonding. That's why I like to watch it with somebody. So like, if I run from a bear and get away from a bear, it's pretty exhilarating, but if we run from a bear and both get away, we're like, we're like, you know, we'd reinforce something between the two of us. Or if we run from a bear, but I run faster from the bear, <laughs> right. then the bear gets you and I get away, so. Yeah, that's even better. Even but, better. But that's what makes horror movies so amazing, because nobody actually is killed by the movie, right? You get out. And so. Oh, get out. Let's talk about Get Out, my favorite movie of the year. Yep, and I just wanna give a shout out to Cabin in the Woods, but we're not gonna talk about that one. Okay, because that's that was another horror movie that you loved because it wasn't, it was, well, uh, yeah. you don't wanna do any spoilers. You've seen it, all right. You, you, you should if, see, you, if you're gonna if see you it. If you love horror seen. movies, you should see it, and if you don't love horror movies like me, you <clears> should see it. Right, it's a perfect horror movie for people who don't love horror movies, but Get Out, uh, which we did not see together. We saw it separately, right? Because I saw it, right. we, yeah. But we saw it like the same weekend. And uh, it just, it's just like a perfect movie, man. Well, everything it, it's so rare that people rave and rave about a movie and then you you haven't watched it yet and you're like, man. It's too built there's up. There's no way. Yeah, it can't live it's up gonna, to the hype. And then it does. I didn't know any of the details and if you don't, I don't, want, I don't think I wanna tell you. But, um, but I but encourage so you. you should see it. If you've avoided horror movies, definitely Cabin in the Woods definitely, probably Get Out before Cabin in the Woods. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Get Out is actually not as, right. I don't think it's as scary as, as Cabin in the Woods. And also it's not Ca- a, Cabin in well, the Woods is like a tropey movie that's like making fun, it's a parody of horror it's movies like, yeah. with yeah. a twist. Uh, but This is more of a thriller. Like, I mean, I didn't watch those either, like Hand That Rocks the Cradle, any of that stuff. But it's a little different than a horror movie, like a, a psychological thriller. Yeah. So, and that's what Get Out is. And it also has this incredible social message, which is like, uh, you know, and it's, and the thing that is, is pretty, is so amazing about it is you got a guy, Jordan Peele, who, you know, is one half of a comedy duo. We can relate to that, who all of a sudden just busts out this perfect movie that makes over $100 million. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a feat in and of itself. And he also has said that he's got like a handful more of these type of movies. I love that he did that. that I mean, a, that addressed my, something important in a really creative way. Yeah, I would say he's a he is a creative hero of mine. Oh, definitely. Along with Beck. Beck. Beck is a musical creative hero of mine. The way he can shape shift, and I just I really have this on my creative heart, and I want to do it. Hmm. Beck, huh? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a fan. But. I have one more, but I can't remember right now who it is. I'm keeping a running list of cre- Moby. No, <laughs> creative heroes of mine. But I saw Moby in a I saw Moby at Kitchen Mouse. I saw the back of Moby's head. You could switch any of those three words around, and I'd still believe it. I saw a mouse at the Kitchen Moby. <laughs> it's, I don't know what you're talking about. So, it, but then I presume that you're moving on to it. Oh gosh, yes. Because what you were talking about with the kids was they've been badgering us to see It. And I'm like, now I remember when I was 10 years old and It came out on television yeah. as a mini series. As a network television And thing. 
Yeah, and I couldn't do anything because they everybody, were restricted by network television. Everybody at school was talking about it, so I did watch a lot of that. But it had that creepy clown, and it scared the crap out of me. And I I don't recall watching all of it, but I watched portions of it just to be in the know. I watched that with my brother. Um, I remember watching that miniseries. But this it, first of all, guys, come on, let's be real. This the it from this year is so much better than the original. Let's just let's just be honest. Is that a is that a question? Yeah, no. Yeah, people. There are people who, no matter how things are done, they always say it's not as good as the original. He's not as good of a clown as the first guy. It's not as scary. It's not as creepy. This you're wrong. Okay, I know that this seems like a subjective thing, but you are objectively wrong if you think the original it is better than the current it. On every level, you are wrong. You have a in you have an incorrect perception of the world and those two movies. Okay, let's. So now that that's out of the way, this it and and uh, you, and now they're like, I'm glad you pointed that out. Yeah. I am totally swayed by your cogent yeah. argument. <laughs> Um, it was very gracious too. It's so, so you've won the hearts and minds of every. <laughs> hey, I'm not about winning hearts and minds. I'm just about stating facts. So it, so so, now that I've settled it, is what you said. So, okay. um, it is so good. Now, there's a lot of people, and now, I, well, let me say, it is so good. I saw <laughs> you it, loved it too, except for that clown part. <laughs> you know, you loved every minute of it, though, man. <sighs> man, I'm not proud of the fact that I took my kids to see it, not Lando of course, but I mean, Lincoln, once once you see all the other ones, like Lincoln has, and he's not coming up to my bedroom at night scared, then I'm like, all right, fine, we'll go see it. If I get some cool points out of it, I'm kinda curious. So yeah, I'm not proud nor not proud that I took them to see it. Yeah. And you took Locke, you and Locke went to see well, it. Well, I, I, so I, Locke was playing basketball at the Y and then I picked him up and uh, I didn't tell him. I just picked him up and I was like, you got, we gotta go home and get ready because uh, in one hour we're gonna be watching it and his face just lit, lit up. Which is, I, I, as a dad, <laughs> I cool. just love being able to do something like that with him. And then yeah. during the movie, we were grabbing each other and screaming the entire, we were running from the bear and repeatedly getting away together. And we bonded because of that. It's we absolutely love and he's gone back to see it again. That's interesting because um, I reserved seats for me, Lillian Lincoln, and then uh, a friend of theirs and their friend's mom. But the seats couldn't all be together, so me and the friend's mom sat together. You had a little date, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, there wasn't as much like grabbing each other camaraderie yeah. with like my kid's friend's mom that I kinda know. Right, well I was also, I was actually kinda disappointed because not in the movie, but in the people watching the movie. Because the movie was so good, it was scary. Now first of all, there are people who don't think the clown is scary and I think that that's fine. If you're not scared of something, you can't help it. People just think it was too, it was like. Um, Cartoony or something? I don't know, if, if, you're, if you don't find the, clowns, find the clown scary, then the whole thing is ruined for you. And I know there's some people at the office who didn't find him scary. So I, you can't argue with that. I found it incredibly scary. I kind of give myself over to movies when I watch them. But also well, after the first scene, I think they did a bang up job of establishing how afraid you should be of this clown. Yes, it was a great first right scene. Right off the bat. And also it like, was surprising. I was like, whoa. Incredibly funny. Those kids, it's, first of all, those kids are incredible actors. And it, it, the, it was just crafted. So I mean like cinematically, like even in that shot, like there's that overhead shot where it's raining in the aftermath of what happened. And there's, you know, it's like the water's draining away. All the visual choices, but the kids are oh so goodness. talented. What's I've the, never seen a movie. What's the kid's name? What's the kid's name from Stranger Things? The the main dude from It and Stranger Things. Kid from Stranger Things, I think, is what he's properly called. Finn Wolfhard. Yeah, Finn. Okay, so he was great. He's that, funny. One of the things about that kid is that. In a way that hasn't it hasn't happened since the '80s that you kind of saw kids kind of grow up and star in movies that adults liked. Yeah, so very nostalgic. The feeling. '90s, the '90s kind of ushered in this time, and definitely most of the 2000s have been where kids are in movies that are mostly for kids, and then occasionally uh, people, you know, stars, star kids. Adults will tolerate the movies, but back in the '80s, you had like kids that were in family movies that became stars yeah. and they kind of grew up and they were good actors and they were respected. Like I can totally see that kid becoming 
being somebody that we know for our entire lives as an actor. You know, that just doesn't happen a lot, but he's incredible. He's incredible in Stranger Things. He's incredible in It. Yeah, but all that, the kids are. It, that's the cool thing is that it's a book from the 80s set, it, it was written then, right? I mean, it. I mean, it certainly came out as a miniseries in the '80s. Uh, but it, then, he, I think he. I think he wrote it in the in the mid '80s. Yeah. You know, and obviously, this is the Stranger Things phenomenon that's happening. I'm. Mean, I'm not saying anything you haven't heard here, but and obviously, Stranger Things was inspired by it, which gave it permission to then be re-inspired by Stranger Things. But they didn't have to make the choice to set it back in the '80s necessarily. I, I guess that was a story, so they kind of had to do that. But the style of it. But then adding on top of it, the nostalgia factor that you're talking about of kid stars in movies for adults and kids was was like that last piece that brought it all together. It was like it's in the eighties, um it, it it and it's shot like that, like a movie from the eighties, yeah. but done in like the highest production value of now. But also that whole phenomenon is very nostalgic. Yeah. And then just visually, there's so many memorable and horrifying scenes. And it keeps coming at you. It's like, un, it's unrelenting in and how, it, and how many times it just keeps coming back. I'm tempted to say that I like horror movies. I mean, I'm gushing about this movie. Maybe I finally switched over. You like good horror movies, which I agree, there's not a lot of them. You know, most horror movies are bad, but this year has been, but it been had good. a, but it had other things. It had humor. It, it had <clears throat> well, a lot of horror. The best horror movies have, have are funny as well. I mean, Get Out was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Um, and even some of the best ones from from back in the day, like Nightmare Nightmare on Elm Street or Friday the Thirteenth, like what, they were funny because well, of course I never saw those. Freddy Krueger was funny. He was legit funny. Like he had like one liners. He had or something? one liners. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, he was funny. You can watch those now, and you won't be. You really won't be scared. But but talking about okay, the, but I'll laugh. The remake. I have another point to make. It versus it then versus it now. It's the same people make the argument that, you know, if uh, if the NBA players from the '80s played the NBA players from today, they would totally beat the NBA NBA players for today. They were just it was so much more of a pure game, and they were they were tougher physically. You are also wrong. You are objectively wrong. If the NBA championship team, if the if the Golden State Warriors were to play the 1993 or 95 Chicago, Chicago Bulls, Bulls, they would decimate them. Ho ho ho! Horace Grant. They you don't you, you don't you, you got to understand how much the game has changed in in 20, 30 years. It's changed so much. Like they move faster. It's, you can definitively prove this. Somebody needs to just scientifically break it down so their argument will just be over forever. I'm just telling you, I know well, that they, they were they, great. They prove it in the Olympics every but the year, game every has, four years. Exactly, exactly. So there's a definitive measure of athleticism and what happens with world records? They get broken. Every year at the, at the Olympics for these definitive things like sprinting and jumping and weightlifting, typically there are records that are set. Why is basketball any different? The game is evolving. Kids, my kid is playing basketball right now, and they are He's better so, than Jordan. They are so much better than I was at that age. And I realize we're in, you know, we're in Southern California, but North Carolina is a pretty good basketball state. But like the skill level of all these kids, like the mean skill level, is so much higher than what we had. There's just no, it, it, there's no contest. And all the filmmaking, to take it back to filmmaking, we've gotten so much better. The technology has gotten so much better and the sound and all these things have gotten so much better. And not to mention, the It would not even be, is not an argument because the original It was a network television miniseries that couldn't, had so many lines that they couldn't cross, so many things that they couldn't show and couldn't say, and then you, and you don't have those restrictions with the, the, the modern day version. There's just no contest. Why are we even talking about this? I think the exception is there will never be another Texas Chainsaw Massacre, except for the fact that they've made like countless sequels. Am I wrong in thinking that Matthew McConaughey was in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequel? <laughs> I, I'm, I, I think I'm, you're wrong about George you. Clooney dying his hair ever, and I think you're wrong about that. <laughs> George Clooney 
Dude, George Clooney dyes his hair for roles, yeah, but then for he, roles only. But like on in like uh, not as on a, the front of a magazine. No, 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 no. In Texas Chainsaw Massacre: The Next Generation in '94. <laughs> okay, Matthew I McConaughey. want you to say that on mic, right? Matthew McConaughey was in Texas Chainsaw Massacre: The Next What? Generation. No, that was Star Trek, man. That was the Next Generation. He was on Star 1994. Trek. 1994. Matthew McConaughey. You are wrong about George Clooney, though. Somebody look that up. <laughs> Okay. Yes, he did. No, for, for just in normal life. Just like Anderson Cooper doesn't, over there. doesn't dye his hair either. George Clooney reveals why he will never dye his hair. Okay, see. George Clooney, George reveals, Clooney reveals why he never dye his hair. And yeah, again. <clears throat> I'll call George myself. Fine. Okay, you're one for two, man. Hey, but listen, I'm telling you that the, the, but the here's Golden the thing. State Warriors would definitely the, be the, the Bulls. Texas Chainsaw about Massacre. It. Texas Chainsaw Massacre could not be redone scarier than it, the 1974 version because it was the low budget, like horrible acting, like. You're right, it, I, I completely it was, agree with it that. Was, it, was, it was like the, a Blair Witch experience, but it, was, but it was real. Now, you know what I'm saying? I know that oh, is, is not clear, but. I also watched the Blair Witch. I have, I have not seen the Blair Witch I watched the Bla project. Like Locke is on, the, he's on this horror movie binge, right? And so I'm, so we watched Blair Witch together, and uh, I actually. The cinema is that it was all shot on uh, home video. Well, it was, yeah, it's actually, a, it's a recording of real events. Oh. I'm not saying that Texas Chainsaw Massacre was that by any means, but I'm saying that it has that feel because it was done by like, all like borderline amateur filmmakers, like just trying to make it happen with no money and yeah. outside of Texas and nearly killing each other trying to make this thing. And I think it translates into the way that this demented family, the actors chose to act and like, I watched the closing scene right before we came in here and it just gave me chills because just the production of it. And now. It's probably a scary film set to be on. Yeah, you know, because it was so they had to get so raw and the, it's like the lines between reality and the fiction were probably at the very pretty blurry at the very end. This like big rig drives up. Oh, the big rig! To because the the bloody girl has made it to the highway and she's being chased by the by Leatherface and his brother, and then the rig hits his brother, runs over him. Mm. And then the guy, the rig pulls over and the guy gets out. And then like, it's just, it's a rig that's full of chickens. Oh, a chicken rig. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that that was not a production choice. It was like, you know, what's the scariest rig we can get? The correct answer is a chicken rig. But you, but they didn't but do that. Was, on what's the only rig they we probably have access to? They probably flagged down the first rig that came down the road once they set up the shot and it was that dude in a chicken rig and they talked him into being in the movie. I don't know the story, but that's what, you could just taste it. You could taste the chicken. You could taste that chicken. Speaking of rigs, you, have you seen that movie where the guy is being chased by the rig? That's a horror movie. He's being chased by the rig the entire time. <laughs> uh, it's the guy that- Just take an exit, dude. That's a, that, sometimes you'll see that movie on, as a TV movie on. And it's, uh, what is the guy's name? Dennis something. Matthew McConaughey. No, it's, but, Dennis, it's he's Dennis the big rig. He's he is being is chased it like by Thomas rig. the train. And there's also a horror movie about a baboon called Baboon. You heard about this one? I just I love I we got to make a horror movie, man. We got to do it. I think that's I think that that is the conclusion. You, you know, just because Jordan Peele made a blockbuster horror movie, I feel like now we, I can't even entertain the possibility. No, but I think but the two of us working together, you've got the guy who loves to scare people and the guy who loves to be scared. Oh. So we work in tandem to dial it in perfectly. And we, and we make sure it's got all the elements that a good, great horror movie should have. But it's super funny. It's also a musical because that hasn't happened in a while, no, right? No. Come on, let's do this. Okay. Let's make a horror movie, a horror musical before we die. A horror musical menominee. You wanna shake on it? Macomedy. Macabony. You wanna shake on Macab it? Macab. What about that? Macabony. Macabon. Macomedy. Macomedy. Macabody. Macomedy. Macomedy. 
and Matthew McConaughey stars in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap, we're gonna do everything we can to get Matthew McConaughey in this thing. <laughs> All right, guys, I bet you we could get John Mayer in it. He was in uh, Zombiever. Yeah, he was, wasn't he? Yeah. Not right. one I necessarily recommend. All right, guys. Thank you for hanging with us. I hope you weren't too afraid. If you if you were listening to this whole thing in like a dark and windowless room with the, with a purring chainsaw or a meat hook dangling nearby, then good for you for hanging in there to the end. But just think about the fact that <laughs> anything is possible. Someone could have snuck into your house oh, while you were listening to this and that little creak that you heard downstairs, that could be a person or it could be some sort of supernatural being that is ready to infest your soul. You're a jerk, man. Now try to go back to sleep. They weren't trying to go to sleep. <laughs> Some of them were. Some of them were. <laughs>